I think a, a concern that I have with the Yankees, and I have kind of a similar concern, honestly, with the Mets, you talked about stacking arms in the starting rotation. And I look at this Yankees rotation right now. You've got Cole, Kluber, Tyone, but you're an injury or two away. And Severino's coming back too. I should mention that as well. But you're an injury or two away from who are you giving starts at? Michael King? Montgomery's your two yeah. starter if you get a couple of injuries. Yes. And, and, and again, not surprising injuries. If Kluber or Tyone get hurt, you can't say you didn't see it coming. Right. Or you're going to use openers. I mean, that's really the other right. thing that you're probably looking at. You know, I mean, Domingo Herman, for example, and this has been a, a big point of discussion. If the Yankees weren't so far in the hole in pitching depth, I mean, Domingo Herman would be on Mars right now in terms of like, should be what, no Yankee, distractions. what Yankee players have been saying about him, which I tend to agree with, by the way. But I'm just saying from a depth point of view, like if they had maybe done a little better job of accumulating it, they would not have the need for Domingo Herman to be in camp right now, but that's where they stand. He's there and you're looking they need at that. They, they might. Yeah. I, they I might. think they need him because you don't go through a season with five starters. You, you're not going to get through the entire season. I think I'll confidently say with Kluber and Tyone taking the ball 32 times. I, I just don't see that happening. Could they be there come postseason time? Hopefully for the Yankees sake, but are they both taking the ball 32 times with no interruption? That's not going to happen. So you need to hold on to a guy like Herman, who in an ideal world should not be there, weighing the team down with these have to comment on him, have to say he's on thin ice if you're Luke Voigt. For a championship team that needs to win this year, that should not be what you're focusing on from the outset of spring training. And Herman should be able to work out his life elsewhere. He should be able to go home, reassess, rehab, get right, and not do it trying to win a starting rotation spot for the Yankees, at least in my view. And the Yankees don't have the luxury. So given what we've said, given that it's boomer bust, given that they need to win the AL pennant, and you're an injury away from giving Michael King, no disrespect, a lot of meaningful starts, a lot of we need you type starts. That's an issue to me. Uh, this rotation could be good. You could boom on a guy like Kluber, and he's close to what he was in 18. Tyone's a guy with a lot of high upside. Cole's Cole. Severino comes back. Again, we're, we're attaching ifs, which is what we shouldn't be doing. Severino comes back, and he looks like Luis Severino. Montgomery's a really solid back end of the rotation arm and a guy you can potentially rely upon. And then you have the Hermans and, and the Luiskas of the world. But Again, uh, is that going to happen yeah, on a team that needs to win? And that's an open question. And I mean, I look at this rotation right now and, and I would buy Tyone. I would sell Kluber. That's where I'm looking at right now. I think Tyone's going to be really good. I think him being with Garrett Cole and, and Garrett Cole has said a lot of really good things about him. And he was showing a lot of positive signs in 2019. I agree with you there. Pre Tommy John, I think that'll be good. Kluber, I think, also has a chance just because you know, he was with Matt Blake in Cleveland and, and they can figure out some things there. But I, I wonder, ability wise, I mean, this guy's pitched eight games in two years. <laughs> At some point, my God, like eight games in two years. I mean, he well, was that's great part of the that. problem. Don't it's... get me wrong. He was great before that and, and maybe he could still be good, but two, eight games in two years, that's, that's not going to get it done. Like, what's a success out of Corey Kluber? If he takes the ball 10, 15 times in the regular season and then he's there come game three of the ALDS? Yeah, maybe. That's probably a success because he's still there come the postseason. But that's a lot for $11 million? $11 million to take the ball 10 times in an 162-game season, maybe. Can you you count on Kluber to hold up? We we talked about Tanaka so much as a ticking time bomb the last few years at his elbow, he always seemed to hold up and take the ball at least 25 times. I'm going to be cringing when Kluber's on the mound. If he pitches well and he's striking out guys and he's giving you six quality innings, then I will not cringe. But he, every time he releases that ball or throws a slider, don't you worry his shoulder's going to fall off? Yeah, but also, there's also the question of the velocity that I mentioned before. He was at 90 or 91 before this injury. I mean, how many bats is he going to miss, honestly? I mean, if his fastball is topping out high 80s, uh, that's just that doesn't miss a lot of bats in today's baseball. Like high 80s wouldn't have got it done 20 years ago. 
it definitely doesn't get it done now when everybody's throwing 95 or above. Not to overreact, but you're looking intra squad the other day, and he's throwing 90 on the outside corner, and Luke Voigt must have hit it off him 450 feet to center field. I, yeah. I mean, geez, the boom off the bat there. Not to judge off one at that against the reigning American League home run leader in Luke Voigt, but the Yankees are going to need a real boom from one of these guys. Let's say Kluber doesn't pan out. They'll need in return Tyone to be really good in order for this rotation to be what you want it to be. Because Severino coming back, and a lot of people forget how lethal Severino can be because he's he's looming out there and he's been hurt so much. Even before the Tommy John, he had a lot of the forearm issues and, and stuff that kept him out of the fray for much of 2019 before the playoffs. So a lot of people forget of what Severino is capable of. But I can't task anyone coming back from Tommy John surgery to just slide back in and be what they were. If Severino comes back and is a three, four inning guy or a, a utility type pitcher who can give you a start and sometimes come out of the bullpen, piggyback an opener, you have to be pleased because he's coming off a major injury. So I can't look at it as Cole Severino like the Yankees intended. I view it as one of Kluber and Tyone has to hit or else you're in dire straits for a team. Again, this is a must. We can't be going another year of watching Rays Astros in the ALCS. That's That can't happen. If that happens, where are we going next year yeah, as I, Yankee fans? I will say, though, if, if you look at the rotation, just to play a little devil's advocate here, if you get to a playoff series and you sit there with, let's just say, hypothetically, Cole, Tyone, Severino, figure it out for game four, that gives you a chance. That's pretty good. That I, is that is almost an ideal scenario in some ways. And let's say Maybe. Montgomery, who, again, the numbers wouldn't show it last year, but showed up in game four of the ALDS. He, yes. He's a guy who doesn't shy away from the moment. I could see him putting together a productive full season now that he has some experience under his belt. You throw a lefty into that equation for maybe a game four. I like that look. I do. And then maybe a Herman or... So one of these other depth options they're throwing out there. Davey Garcia. Davey Garcia. Th- those guys become two, three inning guys out of the bullpen, potentially. Backing up an opener if you need it. I think you need to get yourself into a situation where guys like Herman and Davey Garcia are luxuries. It, where, where they're really a, a major plus. You can't be – and I left out Garcia out of that mix before – the Yankees have high hopes for him. I'm just not sure how much of his handful of starts last year will translate into a season where the league knows him. And he's another guy who doesn't throw awfully hard. And says, a lot of people were, were hailing Davey Garcia as this guy last year. And I wasn't that high going into the postseason because he's a guy throwing 92-93, pretty flat, really good curveball, high upside, no fear. But – yeah, I, he's not a number two. No. If Garcia is your number two, would that be championship level? Probably not. Probably not. I will say just quickly before we go here, because I know we got to hit a station break. If you were to sit here right now, and again, there's a long wait till October. I'm not, you know, I, I sometimes don't love this game. But if you were to say right now, do you think the Yankees win the AL pennant? I'll go first. I'll say yes just by default because I I really don't see anybody else in the AL who I'd feel good about rolling with into the season. I say yes. From what I've seen, I'm not, I'm not guns blazing. I'm not, I'm not ultra confident. And that, that worries me because I've seen this story play out a lot, but who's better than them, which is why it is make or break. Who's better than them? Who, 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 who can they explain away losing to right now? I don't see that team. I mean, maybe Chicago if they have a great season, but again, I'm skeptical of them with Tony LaRusso. The Rays were good, and I view last year as inexcusable too because you can't explain away losing to the Rays and having the Rays basically run all over you the entire season, embarrass you. But Astros, excusable. Red Sox, 108-win team, excusable. 2017, anything further than the wild card game was just gravy. And they almost took it all the way to the World Series. So 
there's not a team you can you can explain away losing to other than the Dodgers in the World Series or or a really potent NL team when you've already won an AL pennant, which you haven't done yet. So I say yes, but I say it with a, a, a large question mark. And I think that question mark comes down to what we were just talking about. 